Today I'm going to show you a much better way to mix your paints and take your watercolor painting to a whole other level. We are going to be mixing our paints on paper and then we'll be mixing that with other paints as we add them as we are painting. It's as simple as that, let me show you. Pros do this all the time because it helps bring their paintings, you know, some depth, some detail, you know, it just brings the whole thing to life. So there are a couple of ways to do this and we're not glazing here, okay? Glazing is when you wait for your first layer of paint to dry before adding another layer and I will be doing a video about that soon, but that's not what today's video is about. We're talking wet on wet, paint on paint mixing. So the first way to do this, which is a lot of fun but can be kind of hard to control, is to load your brush with different colors and let them all mix on paper. And as you can probably see, the number one reason why we would want to mix color on paper instead of a palette is there is no way you can get these types of effects using a brush with pre-mixed paint. I mean, look at these guys, the seamless transitions, you know, the undertones you get scattered around. There's just no way to get this effect without mixing your paint on paper. Now, the biggest tip I have for you, the number one thing you absolutely need to do in order to be able to mix your paint on paper is using the correct water ratio. We want a coffee consistency, okay? Remember that video we did a while back? So 70% water, 30% paint. We want the water to be able to flow nicely. If you don't use enough water, the paint just won't flow and it won't mix. If you use too much water, it will just be all over the place. <laughs> so coffee consistency. So this is way too thick, okay? It is not running at all. Uh, and I am just going to add another color that we want to mix with these so I can show you the difference. As you can see, nothing is running, so this is clearly too thick. So do you see? There is absolutely no mixing or almost no mixing. Let me show you how this happens using a coffee consistency. A little bit more water. Yeah, now it's flowing. So do you see? Needs a little bit more water, this one. And now they're both moving, okay? So let's see how this works when we mix it. So here you can see all the blending, very nasty color, that's not the point here. <laughs> Whereas here, they just touched and did not blend. So coffee consistency, guys, that's what we need here. Now let's try the wet on wet version. And I guess that's the one I use the most for skies, landscapes. I just love doing galaxies and mixing colors on paper. You know, it is the perfect way to create the most perfectly detailed sky you will ever see. So here's our very dark, very moody night sky. You can definitely see all the colors we've used here. You see the light blue, you see the darker blue, you see the alizarin crimson, you see the lemon yellow. You can definitely see we have added a couple of colors here, but they're all just perfectly mixed into a completely different shade. So we take a lot of colors and turn it into something else, but you can still see the teeny tiny personalities all scattered over here to make this beautiful night sky. Another very good tip I have for you in mixing paints on paper is to add a little bit of gravity, okay? If your paper has some kind of an incline, it just does its job on its own, you know? As we have this coffee consistency, the water will run down into other paints and create new colors of their own. Because sometimes mixing paints while the paper is flat can be a little bit harder. Now the answer here is to add your paints and then just go back with a brush loaded with water, not too much, just enough to make a quick swoop over them and get them to mix. Water is our hero here, make no mistake. That water bead we're always worrying about, for this it is a good thing. And if it's a big surface, you can always spray the paint to help them mix even more. If it's smaller objects, ugh, it's not such a good idea because you lose all your edges and it all kind of blends together. It's kind of hard to control where the water goes. Guys, I'm a total beginner here, so if you usually mix your paints on paper and you have other tricks or tips you'd like to add, please let me know in a comment. I would love to know more about this. 
And look at this guys, none of the colors we're mixing got muddy. I mean, how often does this happen when we're mixing colors on the palette without knowing what we're doing? <laughs> muddy colors are the worst and being able to mix freely without having to worry about that is such a great thing. But here's what I have to say is for me, the biggest difference between mixing colors on a palette and mixing colors directly on paper. How do we usually mix paints? To create different colors or whatever. So we get a palette or a plate in my case or whatever it is and we just mix two paints, in this case our blue and our yellow, that makes a lovely, lovely green, and then we paint. When you mix on a palette, you get flat, solid colors. Mixing on paper gives you these subtle variations that are so unique. It produces a sort of blending that makes the colors work together nicely without completely blending it. It's like they're moving in a way, and that for me is the magic of watercolors. I mean, <laughs> there's an obvious difference here, right? Flat, solid, lots of nuances, you don't really see a yellow, you don't really see a blue, they're all greens, they're just completely different shades of green. It's like they're moving, right? It's like they're alive, they're not just flat standing on the page, it's like they could swirl or something like that. I love this effect. But doing a whole painting with all these mixes is kind of overwhelming to the eye, right? So for me personally, the best way to do it is to combine them both, okay? So in a painting, use solid flat colors mixed with mixed on paper colors, and that's how you get the true depth, the true detail that takes you know your paintings to a whole other level. And guess what? You can still mix colors this way, okay? It doesn't need to happen on a palette or whatever. Let me show you. For example, we have burnt sienna, right? And we know how we get burnt sienna by mixing colors on a palette. So red, yellow, and blue. What do you think? Kind of similar, right? Now, let's mix it on the page. Same results, much more complexity. So this is still much wetter than this one, but look at this, guys. You can see they're very similar, and at the same time, you see there's just more to it, right? This is flat, this is solid, this has undertones. Blue undertones, yellow undertones, you can definitely see that there's a difference. Let me dry this and show you again. So while they are not 100% the same, you can definitely see their Urban Sienna. And check this out. <laughs> the paper version is much closer to our Cotman version of Urban Sienna than the one we mixed on the palette. It just shows how badly I mix on palettes, but you know, <laughs> I just wanted to show off. <laughs> this is a little bit paler, not as orange. I'd probably have to add a little bit more red or a little bit more yellow. Yellow probably. And this one is quite, quite similar. Guys, give this a try and let me know how it went and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.